lesson, we're going to be talking about renaming fractions, meaning changing an improper fraction into a mixed number and changing a mixed number into an improper fraction. And these two skills are very, very important when we want to be able to multiply fractions and when we need to simplify fractions. So first of all, we're going to start with changing an improper fraction into a mixed number. And remember, an improper fraction is any fraction where the numerator, the top number, is bigger than the bottom number. And so if we want, we can think about this in terms of a picture. And the bottom number tells us how many pieces we have in one whole. So if I draw like a circle or like a piece of pizza, cake, and I'm going to split it into nine pieces. So first I'm going to split it into thirds, and each third into thirds. It's not the greatest picture, but we get the idea. So there's nine pieces. And now the top number tells us how many total pieces we have. So we have 24 total pieces. And each of our circles has to have nine. So, so far I have nine. I'm going to make another pizza, another circle with nine pieces. That will give us 18. Not quite enough yet, so I'll do one more. Splitting it into thirds and then thirds again. And we have over 24. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shade in a little bit so we know how many of those 24 pieces would be. So there's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So to change this into a mixed number, a mixed number just means I want to know if we have any holes and then how much is left over. So in this case, a whole is one circle, or nine total pieces. So how many holes do I have? And I can see that I have two holes fully filled in, shaded in with my red pen. And then how much is left over? One, two, three, four, five, six out of nine pieces in that circle. So 24 ninths as a mixed number is two and six ninths. And then we can always simplify this. I can divide by 3 on the top and the bottom and get 2 and 2 thirds. Now, every time we simplify a fraction from an improper fraction to a mixed number, we're not going to want to draw out a picture. And we don't have to draw a picture every time. We can just look at our fraction here and work right off of that. So what we can do is we can take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. Or think of how many times does 9 go into 24? So let's try it. 24 divided by 9. 9 goes into 24 two times. That would be 18. And I can subtract and get 6. There's nothing else here. If I wanted to, I'd put a decimal and we keep working, but we're working with fractions. So we don't want any decimals in our answer. So this means I'm done. And this is my answer. So now we need to write it as a fraction. Up here, this tells us our whole number. So our whole number is 2. The number down here, the remainder, that's like the top part of our fraction. So 6, and we're still keeping our denominator the same. We're still working with 9. So 2 and 6 ninths. And we end up with the same answer we had before. Again, we can simplify 6 ninths by dividing by 3 and getting 2 and 2 thirds. So much easier, much quicker than drawing out pictures every time. Just remember, you're thinking about how many times does 9 go to 24 or 24 divided by 9. We're going to try a couple of these so we can make sure we have the idea down. So this time we have 18 fourths. How many times does 4 go into 18 and how many are left over? That's what we want to know when we're writing an improper fraction as a mixed number. So let's go ahead and divide. 18 divided by 4. 4 goes into 18 four times. That would be 16. 18 minus 16 is 2. If I wanted to keep going, I'd have to write a decimal point. That means I'm done. Because we're working with fractions, we don't want any decimal points. So now for our answer, remember, the number on the top is our whole number. Our remainder is our new numerator. And our denominator stays the same. And then our last step is always simplifying our fraction, which in this case we can divide by 2 and get 4 and 1 half. 
We're going to try one more, and then we're going to try it the other way around. It's going to be a mixed number and some improper fractions. So again, uh, my improper fraction is 32, 6, or how many times does 6 go into 32? So we can divide 32 divided by 6. And 6 goes into 32. Um, that's the wrong number there. 6 goes into 32 four times, oh, sorry, five times, which would be 30. And 32 divided by 30 is 2. And why does it keep going? I have to put a decimal point up there, which we don't want to do because we're working as fractions, so that means we're done. So I'm going to write our answer. The number on the top is our whole number. The remainder is our new numerator. And the denominator stays the same. And then our last step is to simplify, which in this case we're going to divide by 2 again and get a total of 5 and 1 third. Now that we know how to change improper fractions into mixed numbers, we're going to look at doing this the other way around. This time we're going to start with a mixed number and we're going to change it into an improper fraction. And we have to be able to do this when we want to multiply and divide fractions. So it's very important that we know how to do this. So again, we can think about this in terms of a picture. And so in this one, it says that there are two holes. So I'm going to draw two whole circles. And I have three-fourths of another one. So I'm going to split it into four. And I'm going to shade in three of them. Now, if I change this into an improper fraction, I want to know just how many pieces there are, not how many total. So obviously there are pieces. There are going to be four in each of them because we're working with three-fourths. So what I'm going to do is take these other holes and also split them into fourths. And it said we had two, four, two, and three-fourths. So that means these two are completely shaded in. And so now I can look at how many total pieces I have. And I have one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 fourths. I have 11 pieces out of our holes, which are split into fourths. Now, again, just like we were doing before, we don't have to draw out pictures every time we do this. There's a process that we can follow that will make it a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the whole number, 2, and multiply it by the denominator. 2 times 4 is 8, and then we're going to add on the numerator. So 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11, and just like before, our denominator is staying the same. And there we go, we ended up with the same answer. So remember, to change a mixed number into an improper fraction, we take the whole number and the denominator at the top. So let's try it. One and one third. We're going to take the whole number times the denominator. One times three is three. And add the numerator, which will give us four. And our denominator is going to stay the same. We'll try it again with this one. We have three and two fifths. We're going to take the whole number times the denominator, which will give us 15. And add on the numerator, which will give us 17. And our denominator will stay the same. So 17 fifths. Trying it with 2 and 4 sevenths. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 4 is 18. So that would be 18 sevenths. And we'll try one more to make sure we got it. We have 5 times 8, which is 40. And 40 plus 3 is 43 eighths. So as you can see, both changing mixed numbers and improper fractions and improper fractions as into mixed numbers is not hard. There's a process for both of them. It's just making sure that we remember how to do it. So to change, remember to change a mixed number into an improper fraction. We're going to take the whole number times the denominator, add the numerator. That will give us our new numerator, and the denominator will stay the same. And to change the improper fraction back into a mixed number, we're going to divide 18 divided by 7. And 7 goes into 18 two times. That would be 14. And we'd have 4 left over. But why do we keep going? We have to put a decimal point. That means we're done because we don't want decimals when we're working with fractions.
So our whole number is two, that's what we had. Our remainders are new numerators and our denominator stays the same. 